On this week's programme, we bring the finals of the Texacloth Newbridge Puppy Derby from the County Kildare Stadium, plus the Heineken 575 from Cork, and we visit trainer Tony Byrne at his kennels in County Leash. But first, it's highlights from Sheldon Park. The round of the Paddy Power Irish Derby was divided between Thursday and Saturday night last week. Again, a large crowd turned out to see these Derby hopefuls in action. In the opening heat, there was quite a gamble on number six Valencia's side trail, but number one World Class went to traps the favourite. They're coming up behind the traps, the dogs all set, and away they go, and first to show is number one World Class. Leads to the bend from number four, Jimmy Grimble, on the wide outside, number six Valencia side rate, but around the corner, it's number one World Class. Pulls a three or four length advantage, number four, Jimmy Grimble in chase, then comes six Valencia side rate, but World Class is a mile clear of number four, Jimmy Grimble. In third, number six Valencia side rate puts the Tantanex, but out front, still number one World Class. He looks a likely qualifier at this stage. Second, Trap number six, Valencia side rate. Back in third spot, we have number four, Jimmy Grimble, but up the home straight. It's number one, world class that wins this one. Second number six, Valencia side rate. And third number five, Satanta, the outsider. The winning time, 29.82. A powerful performance by world class. He touched even money. That was a big price. Again, we had just five runners in heat four, where Kafima, number four, was an absentee. This one was expected to be a match between number one, Dundrum Prince, and six, Indian Ruler. The hair coming up behind the traps. Away to go, and it's quite a level start. Indian ruler, faster way than usual. On the inside, number one, Dundrum Prince, they're neck and neck going to the corner. On the inside, Dundrum Prince showing ahead now by a leg from six Indian ruler in second. It's three, four lengths back to number two and third, Ted's World Cup. But down the far side, and Dundrum Prince by a length, a little over a bit of daylight from Indian ruler in second. And Dundrum Prince around the second last bend in front here by a length and a half from number six, Indian ruler in second. Number two, Ted's World Cup is back in third. But up the straight is number one, Dundrum Prince leads all the way to win from Indian ruler. Two, Ted's World Cup finishes strongly in third. The winner though, number one, Dundrum Prince in a time of 29.83. In heat six, number five, Frazzled was a strong favourite, but this bitch is noted for her lack of early pace. Could she get a clear run through them? The favourite is number five, Frazzled, the hair behind the traps, and she's away reasonably well this time, number five, Frazzled, and it's very close to the corner, with number four, Jamie McJack, just showing ahead, but number one, Pete Snowball gets up the ins, and there goes Frazzled on the outside. Storms clear in the second bend. This could be quite a run. Frazzled is now clear down the far side from number one, Pete Snowball in second. Four, Jamie McJack is third, but into the third bend, and Frazzled is way out in front here from number one, Pete Snowball. She's 10 clear on the final bend. This is going to be quite a run. Frazzled coming up the straight. This is brilliant for Susan Roberts. Winning in style, Frazzled wins at number five. Second is number one, Pete Snowball, and possibly number six, Mauritius King in third. The time, the best of the night, 29.73. The two Reggie Roberts runners, number one Enchanting Hero and six Disguised, were dominating the betting in Heat 7, where there was also support for number five Sound Sense. A hair comes up behind boxes for this one. A way to go and disguise it away pretty well, but it's very level on the way to the bend. Four Black Loon Flight leading up from one Enchanting Hero on the inside. Six Disguised is next, but it's number four Black Loon Flight. He's 12 to 1 in the betting. He's clear into the back straight from six Disguised in second. Number four Black Loon Flight being chased by six Disguised. One Enchanting Hero is third with five Sound Sense. Third bend and number four takes it up here. That's Black Loon Flight. Is still in front, I should say, by a length and a half from six disguised and second, turning for home, and it's Black Loon Flight number four. Could this be a major shock? Just going to hold on here, Black Loon Flight from six disguised and second, five sound senses third, with Glen Cole number three running on late. The time 29.86. We'll have more highlights from Shelburne Park later in the programme, and just a reminder that next Thursday in Shelburne Park it's the first round of the Lawrence Blunt Diamond Stakes. And Malingar hosts the second round of the Guinness Fair Warrior Sprint. Newbridge Puppy Derby took place at the County Kildare Stadium last Friday evening, offering a winner's prize of €8,000 and trophy. Trainer Joseph Graham had three litter companions go through to the final. Unfortunately, William Coyles, if by chance, was withdrawn from Trap 5. In Trap 1, step lightly, one of three runners for Joe Graham. This is a daughter of Drupal's Vieri and Madame Allwright. She's won four of ten starts, well drawn on the rail. 
In trap two is Furs Hill Way. This is a strong running son of Top Honcho and Mind the Way, trained by Paul Hennessy for Cornelius Kelleher and Mary O'Callaghan. In three, the favorite Roman legend, a son of Droopy's Vieri and Madame All Right. There's three of that litter in this final and loan, owned and trained by Joe Graham, a powerful performer. In four, Breezer, trained locally by Mark Robinson for Esmond Heffernan. This is the son of Joannstown Cash and Haywood Treasure. He'd prefer the rails, but he's not without a chance. <laughs> Trap number five, if by chance a non-runner. And finally, we have six, overdue victory, owned and trained by Joe Graham and Thomas Graham. This is a son of Droopy's Vieri and Madame All Right. He's won two of 10 starts. He's a strong running performer. Well, the runners now in traps for the final of the Texacoff Newbridge Puppy Derby. The favourite trap three, Roman legend. The hair coming up behind traps, and away they go. Number four, Breeze are off to a good start, as is number two, Fierce Hill Way. The kennel companions are last, second last, and third last, and they take an awful bump. Instead, it's number four, Breezer. Leads round the second bend, down the back straight. It's number four, Breezer, with number two, Fierce Hill Way. It's between this two, a further gap to number one, step lightly, but into the third bend, and here comes Fierce Hill Way on the inside. Forced to check slightly, but he's going to show in front as they enter the home straight. It's number two, Fierce Hill Way. He's going into a clear advantage over number four, Breezer. It's all number two now, Fierce Hill Way. He goes on to win it. Second number four, Breezer, finishing well, number one. Step lightly, the winning time, 28.83. And the result of the final of the Texacloff Newbridge Puppy Derby, the winner, number two, Furs Hill Way, trained by Paul Hennessy for Cornelius Kelleher and Mary O'Callaghan, second number four, Breezer, third number one, Step Lightly, the winning time a very decent, 28.83. Well, Kevin, you're here representing your dad tonight. Where is he? He's in Kilkenny. The Langton Derby's on down there. We have four or five down there and that. I'm sure you were on the phone to him by now. Yeah, it came as a surprise to my first, and I'm sure he believed it after a while. So he must have been delighted with this win. Yeah, like he always had it in him. All he had to do was break. He was showing the runs down the back and home. All he had to do was really break. For me, like I mean, it's, it's fantastic to be here because I mean, I think it's 73 or 75 was the first time uh, that Texas Club uh, sponsored this, and uh, I mean, the Cox family and my family have been associated together ever since, and uh, you know, it's fantastic. I just love being here. But it's great for you to sponsor this for so long. Have you any interest in the dogs otherwise? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, uh, presently, my dogs would be a bit like myself, very slow. But, uh, yeah, there was, there was an era when I had all the great dogs, the Curry Hills Fox, Curry Hills Brute, all those dogs. Yeah, I used to own them. And, uh, yeah, I was saying to Pascal Taggart uh, when he was here at the Cox Cup final, perhaps we might get another good dog sometime. But, uh, unfortunately, the last few dogs I had have been very slow. Well, maybe you get a look and have one run in this event next year? Well, possibly, and I'd love to. Of course I would, and with, with, with Dermot and myself and whatever. And, uh, you know, he's rejuvenated the whole thing for us here in Newbridge. Next Friday night, Kilkenny hosts the second round of the Marble City Bar Langton House Derby, and it's the semi finals of the Border Town Queen 620 in Dundalk. <laughs> The Heineken 575 came to its conclusion in Cork last Saturday night with €4,000 and trophy to the winner. All six dogs went to traps. Mal Keevney was there. The first one we see is Slippery Shark, and this one really is drawn for a big run. It's owned by young Padraig Coakley of Mallow. The trainer is John Kiley, a son of Split the Bill and Slippery Image. Next up, it's Lively Bale, owned and trained by Paul McCarthy. This one viewed as a real outsider tonight, a son of Carlton Bale and another Flash. A very useful lady is Blonde Charm. The owner is Mark Robert Curl of England, the trainer Paul Hennessy. Next up in the black jacket, it's Queer I Wonder for Kevin O'Hurley of Carrick Navarre, another outside in the lineup, a daughter of Larkhill Joe and Cag Sab. A big local fancy here is Like Money running in five, it's owned and trained by William O'Brien, and a daughter of Tom's the Best and Just Too Late. And finally in the stripes, it's Get Back in Line, a major player in this final, unbeaten to date in the stake, and clocked 32 seconds even last weekend. It's owned and trained by John Fennell, and a son of Jamela Tiger and Bauer Fiona. There's a real open look to this final. It's the Heineken 575 final. Here comes towards Straps, and it's a fairly level break. Lively Bale is out there very smartly. So too is Slippery Shark, and widest of all, it's Get Back in Line. That carries them through the opening couple of bends. Let's get back in line now. Be pursued by Slippery Shark in third. It's Blonde Charm. Out front, though, it's Get Back in Line. There also is Slippery Shark. It's between this pair at the moment. Blonde Charm beginning to improve as well. Stays in third. Get Back in Line remains in front as they hit the final bend. Ben running very, very wide though. There's a couple creeping through inside, and Slippery Shark is there as well. It's going to be very close to the line between Slippery Shark and get back in line. 
in a very exciting finish. Get back in line has been given the nod. He wins in a time of 31.63, followed home by Slippery Shark and taking third, Lively Bale. We picked him up in Cork here on the 20th of April um, in the sales. We done our homework beforehand. We, we kind of found out who, who we wanted to pick, who we'd want, like to buy. And so um, get back in line was uh, was the one that we uh, we went for. And we, we picked him up for about 900 euro. So we felt he was a bit of a bargain. We, we bought him just solely for fun. And uh, here we are, beyond our wildest dreams. To be quite honest, we never thought we'd he'd win here tonight. What about the race itself? He always runs wide off the final bend. Your, your heart must have been, been pounding. Absolutely. He does it every night. Every, every night we come here, he runs very wide at the last bend. Um, and every night we think, it's gone. Or he's gone. He's gone. He's gone. But he pulled it out of the, the hat every night. So it's great, for, it's great for us, to be quite honest. Big future so ahead of him. Um, he did, yeah. Um, we see how we get on. Um, we celebrate this and we go from there. Next Saturday, the Curraheen Stadium hosts the semi-finals of the AIB 525. Dublin man Tony Byrne recently moved to Clonaslee in County Leash. The reason behind his move was because of his love of greyhounds. He decided to change his career from chef to greyhound trainer. I left school, I was 17. I started off in the step in and step aside. After a year there I moved to the Berkeley Court. I stayed a couple of years there and I worked in the Shelburne Hotel. Then I went to Switzerland for a short time. From Switzerland I came back and worked in several hotels and restaurants. I decided then that I was, after 22 or three years in the chefing business, I'd like to start something new. I've always had greyhounds in, in my life. My dad worked in the veterinary college. He was there for 47 years. And we've, always, we've been very lucky in greyhounds. And I decided that this was the move for me. I bought a dog called Who's Lots for 180 pounds. He won 13 races on the flat and he was beating a short head in a track record in Navin. So I decided that I was going to put him over the hurdles. My father wasn't too pleased because he thought that hurdle racing wasn't his thing. We ran him in the Grand National. I think it was his fourth race in the final and he beat the world record holder, Kildare Slippy. From that I bought my house. And after that we bought another dog, very cheap, a dog called uh, Glass Kenny Echo. Bought him for £350 as a pup and he went on to win the Puppy Derby. Over the years we had a small setup in Step Aside and we've had good success with very few greyhounds. And a lot of people, friends and people I know from greyhound racing ask me to take the chance and come down and that they would give me dogs and, you know, between rearing and breeding and racing that they would send, it, send us down dogs. When I moved here, it, there was a lot of, it was four acres, there was nothing done. So we had to get wiring paddocks up, kennels built, everything had to be done from, from scratch. And as luck would have it, Tony received a helping hand from a young man from Prague. A chap called Thomas Mika. He was invo he's involved in building a track in Prague asked me could I, I take a young chap called Michael Milner, he's with me now at the moment, on work experience. I, we took him over and he's learning, he's great, he's great help to us here at the moment, so he's going to stay I think for six months. And the, I think the intention is that he goes back to Prague and he'll end up training dogs there. Since Michael has arrived in, in the village, I've noticed a lot of younger girls taking a walk up by our kennels. He seems to be a marvellous attraction, and I think he's an addition to Clonisley. Our first success was a dog called Prince Monolulu. In his fourth race in Newbridge, he, he was a length off the track record in a semi-final of the Azuri Stakes, and he went on to win the final. In the process, he got injured, and he's on his way back now, but he's a, I think he's a very special dog. 
looks like a staying type from the halfway. He's, he looks very special. So hopefully he comes back after this injury. Michael Ryan is from Ross Cray and he's a, uh, a breeder. He would have 30, 40 pups. And I met Michael and that's how we come to get Ronan's Delight and scored of Jamie. Michael bred them himself. And when we took them, they were nice dogs, but they've come from being graders up to running in a derby, which is a great feat, really. Ronan's Delight's a, a staying type of dog. He's, he's come on leaps and bounds. He's been in five or six finals, winning one and I, he done the fastest time of the year in Hell's Cross recently. And he ran a, a lovely dog to qualify last week. I think had he have got a clear run, he'd have been very close to the winner. The score of Jamie is owned by Tim O'Mara. He's a, a man in his late 80s. He's never had a run in, in the derby before, and he was a, a little reluctant to put him in the derby, and I think now he's delighted. He's a dog that, he's, he's won two stakes, one in Hell's Cross and one in Kilkenny and he was running up in a third stake in Harold's Cross the night before the derby. So he should be a bit fresher next week and expect him to run a, a good race. <laughs>Another huge crowd at Shelburne Park, massive atmosphere for the second round of the Paddy Power Irish Derby. It was the night when the Droopies were expected to make a huge impact. All four of them very strongly fancied and among the Derby favourites. In the first of the evening heats, Droopy scores was a red hot favourite at 1-5. to five. It looked a foregone conclusion, but this being Greyhound Racing, anything could happen. The hot favourite, Droopy Scholes from two, the English Derby winner, here behind the traps and away to go, and he's away reasonably well, but it's number four, Bally Mac Floss leading up, from two on the inside, Droopy Scholes, six on the outside, Iceland Merlin, oh, the favourite's in trouble, he's gone across the bend, he's back and forth, and it has it all to do, as into the far side, it's number four, Bally Mac Floss out front, from six, Iceland Merlin in second, one dog almighty is next, and two, Droopy Scholes, he's trying gallantly, but he has too much to do, off the final bend and out front it's Bally Mac Floss. she's led all the way in second is six Iceman Merlin one running on Dog Almighty the favourite's gone and number four Bally Mac Floss wins it Dog Almighty comes through for second Iceman Merlin third and Droopy Scholes is out of the derby the winning time 30.07 Droopy Shear was an equally hot favourite in Heat 10. Racing the stripes, he was the one to beat. Keep an eye out for Tony Burns' scored of Jamie. He raced in one. Droopy Shear, the red-hot favourite, out in the stripe jacket. And away to go, and he's away quite well. Leading up is number three, that's Aerostar and four, Bucky Burger. And there now goes Droopy Shear, accelerating into the corner. But it's Bucky Burger leading him. Out of the second bend, and number four, Bucky Burger, by a length from Droopy Shear, who now moves inside and challenges down the back side. And now it's number six, Droopy Shearer. Takes over before the third bend. From four, Bucky Burger in second. It's a few lengths back. Oh, a bit of bumping back in behind. As Droopy Shearer leads for home by about three lengths now from Bucky Burger in second. Up to the line, it's six, Droopy Shearer. Pulling away on the run end to win from four, Bucky Burger in second. A photo for third between three, Aerostar and the fast finishing Droopy's Romeo. The time, a brilliant 29.64. The trend of hot favourites continued in Heat 11. Make All was racing in three, where his main opposition came in the form of legal moment, the Oaks heroine. The favourite, number three, Make All. The hair coming up behind the traps, ready for off, and away to go, and he's not away well. It's two, legal moment, leading up the inside. Five, rank two, Shark are going well. But it's number two, legal moment, leads on the bend. Oh, number three, Make All, makes great ground on the corner. Tracks the bitch into the back straight, and out challenges. Down the far side, this is brilliant. Make All, number three, takes over from two, legal moment. She'll be coming back at him, but it's make all number three. Leads on the third bend from two legal moment in second. Five lengths back to number five. Rank through Shergar in third. Up the straight. It's number three. Make all being challenged again by legal moment. Coming to the line and make all. A great win for number three. Make all from two legal moment in second. Five rank through Shergar is third. The time 29.90. Well, some amazing action already in the first three heats here on the Saturday night session. Droopy scores, unfortunately, out of the derby. And worrying news that the dog might be injured. That will be confirmed later. However, Droopy Shear put in a brilliant run at what about make all? How he rescued himself at that opening bend to score that famous victory. And now let's catch up on some of the other action on the Saturday night session. Persian Ruler was most impressive in the opening round, and he was the hot favourite in heat 13. He also faced a tricky draw in four. The hair coming up behind traps. 
and off they go. Persian Ruler off to a flyer. Number two, though. Farlow Cricketer also going up fast. Into the corner is number two. Farlow Cricketer to leads. Persian Ruler back in third spot. We have number one. Let's have a go here over around the opening corners. And number four in front. Persian Ruler now from number two. Farlow Cricketer in third spot. Number three, Nikita Billy with number five, Nick Finn Willie. But down into the third bend. And Persian Ruler is setting a blistering gallop from two. Farlow Cricketer. Number five, Nick Finn Willie in full stride in third. But out front, Persian Ruler extending his advantage all the while. Number four. Persian Ruler is going to win this one in style. Second number two, Farlow Cricketer. It's close for third between Nikita Billy and Nick Finn Willie. The winning time of very fast, 29.55. Following the elimination of Droopy Skulls, Droopy's Maldini was promoted to favouritism in the Paddy Power Derby. He was racing in Heat 14 in the Red Jacket. The hair now coming around the final turn up behind traps and away they go. And first to show is number one, Droopy's Maldini. Number two, Oren Rainbow immediately moving right, but into the corners, number one. Droopy's Maldini is going to lead round from number two, Oren Rainbow. Number five, Jordan Spark now challenging for second. On the wide outside, number six, the other Dunner, but down the far side, it's number one, Droopy's Maldini. He leads by three lengths. Number six, the other Dunner coming with a rush in second. Back in third, number five, that's Jordan Spark around the final corner. Those number one, Droopy's Maldini. Number six, the other Dunner, his nearest challenger. Then comes five, Jordan Spark, but around the final turn, it's number one, Droopy's Maldini. He's going to hold on. Second number 60 of the Dunner. Third number two, Oren Rainbow. The winning time, 29.90. Seamus Graham won last year's Derby with Climate Control. And this year, he has another blue with serious chances. It's Manola Farlow, and he was the favourite in Heat 15. He was racing from Trap 2. The hair coming up behind traps, the dogs all set, and away they go. And first to show is trap number two, Mignola Farlow. Moving inwards, but he's going to lead in the turn. Now number five, Kilfira King in full stride in second. But around the corner is number two, Mignola Farlow. That leads, number five, Kilfira King gives chase. Then comes number six, Roman's Delight. But out front, it's number two, Mignola Farlow. He leads by a length to number five, Kilfira King. Running on in third is number six, Roman's Delight. But out front, still number two, Mignola Farlow. He's going to lead into the home straight. Kilfira King is trying to close. Number six, Roman's Delight certainly is closing. But around the final corner, it's number two, Mignola Farlow. Another one for favourite backers. He wins it. Second number five, Kilfira King. Third number six, Ronan's Delight. The winning time come up was 30.54. I'd imagine it's a little bit quicker. There was always going to be huge betting in the final heat of the night. With Droopy's Marco, like a shot, and Escalito on the lineup, it was anybody's guess who was going to triumph. Hair coming around the final turn, up behind the traps. The dogs all set, and away they go. And first to show number four, the other Domino. She takes a flyer, leading up from number three. Now Drupi's Marco is showing big early dash. On the wide outside, number six Escalito around the opening corner. Number three, Drupi's Marco goes to the front from number one, Black Bravado. In third spot, Escalito. And number five, like a shot in full stride, but down into the third bend. It's number three, Drupi's Marco the leads. Escalito comes next with number five, like a shot around the final couple of bends. It's number three, Drupi's Marco is into a commanding lead. Number five, like a shot in second. Back in third, number six. Escalito Escalito, but up the home straight is number three. That wins at Drupi's Marco, second number five. Like a shot, third number six, Escalito. The winning time, 29.99. Well, it's really boiling up now here in the Derby. And Persian Ruler, the name that's coming on everybody's lips now, talking about the prospective Derby winner. The third round next Saturday night. Wonder how Persian Ruler will do. Next week, it's festival time in Tralee. Join us for the finals of the Pembroke Construction Rose of Tralee and the Kerry Agribusiness. We'll also have the final of the Aqualine Builders Southern Oaks from Yall and the third round of the Paddy Power Irish Derby. For a complete fixtures list and other information, log on to the Irish Greyhound website at www.igb.ie.